must rock out. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, and hit the mic. What up, guys? It's Drew here, and this is the last video for 2018, and boy, did I go through a shit ton of edits to get here and to really try to make this freaking happen. Before we can start talking about 2018 and what it was like for us in 2018, we have to kind of recap a little bit about 2017. So during 2017, a goal of ours was to become verified. We accomplished that in 2017, and entering 2018, we were allowed to be monetized, which meant we could put, you know, make money off of our videos, and it was great. Logan Paul occurred. We were demonetized. Um, and that sucked. We got some gear. <laughs> and boy, did we get some gear. Right, so we started off, um, this is pretty beefed up at this point, but in here, in this wonderful small rig chassis, is an RXL. What is an RXL? It's not a 4K camera for sure, right? Not out of box, it's not. Let's get that clear. But what it is, is a hardened and much easier to use and more of a prosumer grade GoPro. I enjoy this a lot better than a GoPro. Yeah, it doesn't do half the stuff a GoPro does. But I'm able to get better image quality out of this. I'm able to do what I need to do to the quality of this with my novice skills to make this video footage out of this thing look awesome when I need it to, right? And that's why I like this little camera. It's also the main reason why we switched entirely to the Sony platform. Our other camera, uh, the 63, uh, Missy's favorite camera. Excited? Excited. I'm filming with the 65 now, and they're lightweight. For their money and what you get out of these, it's well worth it, right? Especially as in self-funded, we don't, you know, Sony didn't give me any of this, and Sony, if you'd love to give me cameras, hit us up, right? But let's be real, I'm, I don't even have a thousand subscribers, <laughs> right? Um, the Sony camera, it's a great, great equipment, works wonders, right? Now let's get into the lenses. Now, I've did a lot of research and Brandon Lee, who has a wonderful channel, who also shoots on Sony product lines and shoots mostly Sony native, um, brings up a wonderful article about if you were to have only two lenses, what would they be? Well, the first one is the one I'm filming with, which is the 18-105. to uh, Sony G Master, and this guy, the 10 to 18 wide angle f4. These between these two lenses, the lens you see that I'm filming with now, and this lens here, I'm a, able to accomplish quite a bit. Um, and a lot of my filming is done with that. Now, low light that's a little trickier than, and I haven't quite mastered that, so we'll, we'll, we'll leave it alone. Um, one of my favorite lenses to shoot with is a lens that I got absolutely for free because of Mark Holtz's giveaway. And that is the SimMod 50mm, Canon 50mm, right? Uh, 1.8. And it's a vintage lens. It's got the adapter. This thing is so much fun to shoot with now that I know how to use it. Well, how to make it work for me, really. Um, I have to pair it with this wonderful accessory called the Cine 4K. Um, let me take the hood off. So. I like that, that comes off with Velcro like that, so easy. But um, with paired these two together, I'm able to create some, create some wonderful shots and be able to use this to my best ability with my skill set, which is truly what you want to do with photography. It's not about you know, following everybody's formula I've learned all of this year is basically just coming up with your own recipe, right? Doing what you do best or focusing on the things you can control versus trying to do things you just because it's trendy, like shooting in RAW and shooting in S-Logs. I don't, I don't do that. I tried it. It doesn't really work for me. Um, but yeah, this thing and this lens, awesome deal. Um, between these two, I'm able to accomplish a lot. I'm able to really use this to my to what I believe it's its best ability and what it's really good for is creating those wonderful hues in certain shots and using the 
the aberrations or the imperfections of a vintage lens to create that. And thanks again, Mark, for that. That was an awesome giveaway on your part, by the way. Um, another favorite of mine is using the full frame 50 millimeter. Yes, it's a little noisy. It gets and, and sound when you're trying to record audio with it, which is why I don't use it for filming where I need the audio, but it makes great B-roll on my 65. But I prefer it on the 63 simply because it allows for cleaner shooting. Um, and I don't know how to explain that, but for me it seems when I shoot with the 63 and this together, or when Missy puts these together really well, I can't get the same image quality, although I'm doing it with a better camera body, essentially with the 65. It's just something with it, you know? It's the uniqueness of it, of the pairing of the two. And it only seems to work with these two, right? Um, the macro, I've used it, I like it, it does wonders. And, you know, some key accessories that we've loved are, you know, this guy's cool. It doesn't come with a battery though, remember that. It doesn't come with a battery, only downfall with this when you purchase it, it doesn't come with a battery. It comes with all those, and it doesn't come with all those accessories at the, pr the entry level price point either. At entry level price point, it doesn't come with a battery, right? My biggest complaint, entry level price point doesn't come with a battery. Right. Um, this comes to be really fun. It's a little cheap little thing I got for this. Um, but it allows me to put my filters on here really is what I got it for. And that's kind of why I like it. And oh, one of like, you know, really talk about things that are um, do what you do best, I guess you could say. And it's OK to practice and we experiment. And we do things. But, you know, the drone. Why am I showing you the box and not the drone? Because, yeah, not my thing. The wonderful toys or wonderful um, pieces of equipment, just not my thing. 